So what I have is like some of the standard equipment that a beekeeper would have. What I'm going to do is kind of take you through where bees live, kind of what they do, and how they do it. Almost everywhere now, they live in something called a Langstrup hive. Okay. It was invented, the box of the construction, the shape was invented in like 1857. There's a number of other hive styles, uh -huh. but this is kind of the traditional style for... It's pretty standard, it's pretty standard for the bee there, industry. There are many other ones. The first thing you need to know about a, when you look at a colony like that, it's just a bunch of boxes. They look like this on the inside. Okay. So there's no top and there's no bottom. Okay. Isn't that weird? So then you fill this box up with uh, components that look, in, in their initial state, they look like this. So okay. Once again, there's nothing here. This is called a frame, and it's not accidental in its size. It's uh, an exact dimension to fit in this box. It's got a little bitty ears on it that hang on these little rails and can slide back and forth. To fill this box up, there will be 10 of these in there. Now this frame actually is what the bees live on, and they live on it because we fill it up with something called a foundation. The foundation has printed on it a honeycomb pattern. Yeah, I now. noticed that. So but, does that kind of help them, help guide them to... There's a lot to... of schools of thought about this. Okay. Theoretically, this helps the bees. And this foundation is made out of beeswax, so it's rolled okay. on a mill to have this exact uh, shape. Bees don't need this. They will create honeycomb without any of this, but theoretically this helps them. Then the bees build honeycomb, and it's okay. called drawing out the comb, and then it looks about like this. Oh, wow. Okay? And this is a really ugly one. They, uh, the bees would do a much better <laughs> job of this, but they right. build honeycomb on both sides. They didn't build it everywhere. Here's some hollow spaces, okay? okay. So that's not desirable. You'd be nice to have it everywhere. Yeah. But then you can see the comb is, you know, little hexagons. This honeycomb that you see here is kind of the standard size honeycomb. This is 25 holes per square inch. There's a slightly larger gauge honeycomb, which is 16 per square inch, so the hole's a little bit bigger. Okay. That's what drones grow up in. Little bees grow up in the honeycomb. Food is stored in the honeycomb, and food consists of pollen, so there's pollen in certain cells. Mm -hmm. There's honey in other cells. And there's something called a bee bread in other cells, which is kind of a mixture of pollen and special, special honey. One frame can house comfortably about a thousand bees on each side. If you go out to a hive and you pull one of these frames out carefully and you hold it, on a good day there'll be a thousand bees before you right there. And on the wow. other side, carefully, there'll be another thousand there. Oh, okay? my God. Right. And they're very happy doing what they're doing. So yeah. they just keep doing what they're doing. You do the math, a thousand on each side, that's 2,000 on a frame, and there's 10 frames. So that's 20,000 bees in a box. A colony is like one queen and all the bees for that queen. A typical colony is two of these boxes, so that's 40,000 bees. The other thing you should notice about the Langstroth box that really makes this thing uh, key is this space between the frames. So you see I haven't pushed tight together, mm -hmm. but the thing that keeps them from getting any closer together is the fact that there's this rib that sticks out on the edge. Right. Okay. There's one of those on, on both sides, and okay. so as you push them together, you end up with this space. Right. This is called the B space, which was discovered by Langstroth. The B space is supposed to be big enough that the bees can get in it, but small enough that they won't fill it up with honeycomb. Every other spot in the hive that's bigger than the bee space, they'll try to fill it up with honeycomb. These guys are busy, <laughs> so they'll just yeah. fill everything up with honeycomb. Or something even weirder called propolis. Bees also make another substance most people don't know about. It's called propolis. It's a glue that Ooh. they make out of like pine sap and huh. certain uh, enzymes that they add to it. Yeah. And they fill all kinds of cracks in the hive with propolis. So okay. they're great architects. Just, wow. There's no holes in the hive that they yeah. haven't taken care of somehow, either with honeycomb or they're walking in it or they're filling it up with propolis. So this, this becomes a hive box. It's, it's also referred to as a deep. It's about 10 inches deep. When this is full of bees and uh, full of uh, honey and pollen, it gets pretty heavy. Okay? Uh -huh. It gets pretty heavy. So you don't move these around very much. Here's a frame that they've, that they've done some work on. So what you see here is this patched area, mm -hmm. which is actually honey that's capped over with wax. Oh, wow. So these guys are great storekeepers. They fill the cells with honey, 
and then they cap it over and it stays good until they need it. Why doesn't the honey just run out when the bees yeah. put honey in here? If you got out your protractor and you looked at these honeycomb cells, you would see that they don't stick out horizontally. They're actually off of horizontal by about nine degrees up so the honey doesn't just roll out. Now one of these, if it was completely filled with honey, would be quite heavy. A completely filled frame with honey is maybe, I don't know, eight pounds, something like that. You got 10 frames, that could be 80 pounds. This is not the kind of box that we want to collect honey in for a couple reasons. This honeycomb not only has honey in it, but some of the cells will be filled with pollen. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be filled with baby bees that are growing up, Aww. right? Yeah. So you can't go and extract honey from these frames. It's really because it's got a bunch of contaminants in it. You right. and I just want the honey. So what we do is we have slightly smaller boxes that go on top. And the reason it's shorter is because beekeepers can't lift 100 pounds. This is all solid plastic, but it, once again, it has the honeycomb on it, okay? mm -hmm. or the impressed in it. In order to facilitate getting the honey out of here, mm -hmm. the foundation is solid plastic. And the reason is because we use a centrifuge to spin out the honey. And when huh. you get a centrifuge going really fast, if the foundation is fragile, like it's made out of real uh, beeswax, it can get destroyed in the centrifuge. Mm. It'll get blown out just like the honey does. Okay? Right. So a solid plastic doesn't get blown out of the centrifuge. Okay, well, wait a minute. Why doesn't, why don't these honeycombs get filled up with baby bees? The reason that mine don't is because I use a device like this, which hmm. some people think is a barbecue grill. It's called a queen excluder. And for some reason that I cannot possibly understand, the queen will not go through here, but the workers will. So before we put the honey super on top, we put the queen excluder on top of the frames, and then we put this on top. Okay. And the workers can go right through that. Up here, they can build comb, and they'll put honey up here. But the queen will never get up here, so she'll never lay eggs. And so the workers will never put pollen up here either. Now you've got, you've got a setup. Whether or not you've got a honey super on the hive or not, eventually you need a top. Mm -hmm. And this is a top, okay? There's nothing to it, except you notice that the board that is the top is actually recessed from the edge, mm -hmm. the bee space. So when you put it on there, the bees can walk on, underneath that edge and they won't be tempted to make comb in there. Okay. Now that said, you can look at the top of the uh, supers and you can see they've made honeycomb. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> best laid plans, they don't make honeycomb anyway. If they decide they want to, they're going to make it there anyway. This is called the inside cover. There's still a little hole right here. Okay. And that's to get ventilation. So you actually want air to be able to flow through the hive. Right. Outer cover, and it just looks like that. This is really called a bottom. And it happens to be a screened bottom board, which means that this piece here is a screen instead of actually a board. And in fact, it's got this insert that I can pull out, and now the screen is wide open to the outside. Okay, it's kind of like a right. storm window, right? You can pull this out. So this bottom board is actually the very bottom of the hive. So you sit that on a cement block, or I have a wooden frame here, whatever you want. And you'll notice that it's got this lip all the way around the edge. The hive is gonna, the hive box is gonna sit right on top of this. The bees can go right down there and walk around on the screen. On the front, there's no lip. And that's because mm -hmm. that's where the bees are going to get in. So I'm going to take the boxes that we just made, and I'm going to move them over here, and you can see what it looks like. Boom. See that opening on the front? Yes. That's where the bees go in and out. It's got a little landing pad right here. So the bees, when they come flying in, they can land, and then they walk and in. And then they walk in. Same thing. They can walk out and then take off. Some other bees, this is their job, at least for a while, they will, they're guard bees. And so they will sit along that opening. And if somebody who's not a member of the hive happens to land there, they will, you know, ask them for their credentials, their photo <laughs> ID, and then they'll send them on their way. <laughs> okay? So you got to be a member of this colony to go to okay. this hive. Say, does not have a lot of bees in it, it's weak, maybe the queen is failing, and there's another hive nearby that happens to discover that that hive is failing, they can attack the hive and steal all their honey. So they can rob Oh the my honey. gosh. Yeah, it can happen. Wow. It's not cool. But it doesn't Yeah, that it's, that's not cool. No. It's a big area to defend against like yellow jacket wasps at, in the fall that are trying right. to find a place to survive the winter in. Yeah. Uh, or at the beginning of uh, when you have a new colony and there's not many bees in it, they don't need this 
broad of an area. Right. Or it's cold. Say it's winter time. Uh -huh. Bees hate cold. It'll yeah. kill them. So they got to stay warm. So you don't yeah. want this wide opening. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing called an entrance restrictor. So okay. you just throw it in there and next the space down to a four inches or you turn it and now it's connected down to this little one inch hole right there. If it's a really warm day, like above 55 degrees, they may come out to do, uh, you know, little uh, sanitary flights, so to speak, uh -huh. to clean the hive actually. Okay. They need to clean the bee out of the hive. But they stay in the hive, they get as close together as they can into a tight cluster, and they try to keep the center of the cluster uh, like 90-ish degrees for the queen. Okay, so so, she, so they, they warm it up for her. It warm for her. Okay. So that's why I have this screened bottom board where I can take the uh, the liner out in the summertime, so there's ventilation, easy yeah. filter to keep it cool. But in the wintertime, I'll stuff it back in to help keep it warm. When you start a hive, you can buy bees, and they come in a box like this. Oh, you wow. can buy them from different places that just raise bees. And they come on a box like this to be like, I don't know, 3,500 bees in here. And um, a tan sits in this hole that has sugar water in it so that they don't starve in transit. A few tools here that are just kind of fun. This is, this is my trick question. This is a very simple hobby. This is not complicated. <laughs> this is a brush that we move bees around with. Oh, Guess wow. what we call it? The bee brush. <laughs> this is a tool that you always take to the hive with you. It's the tool that you always take to the hive. Guess what we call it? The hive tool. The hive tool. <laughs> what this is is a centrifuge. Imagine that this frame is completely filled with honey. If this frame was filled with honey, it would weigh like five pounds. Okay? Wow. So what a beekeeper does is he will scratch or somehow remove the wax caps off of all the cells, all the honeycomb, okay. and then lay it in the, oops, lay it in the centrifuge. Okay, so there's a oh, wow. rack in there that moves around like that. Okay. We put this frame in here like this. Three of them. We put three of them in there at once. Okay. Okay. Close her up and then spin it. And and so out pours, pours the honey, honey out, yeah. It fills up the container. It doesn't fill it up all the way. It fills up the bottom a few inches, and then you open up the, the little honey gate and drain and it And it pours bucket. out. And wow. You're done. you're done. That's all you have to do. This is a 16-ounce jar of honey. I always wow. ask people, how many bees do you suppose it takes to make 16 ounces of honey? About a 1,000 bees. Wow. Their entire lives. A oh thousand my bees gosh. entire life to make this much honey. From the time the egg is planted, inside, not in this frame, in one of the deep frames, mm -hmm. the time that it's planted until the bee dies is 60 days. The first 20 days, the bee is going from an egg to a bee. It takes 20 days before the egg actually turns into a bee. It becomes a larvae and then it pupates into a bee. It comes out of the honeycomb. And for the next 20 days, the bee stays in the hive. All of its duties are hive-based at that time. They don't leave the hive. The last 20 days of its life, it's a forager. It can go out to the flowers and bring pollen and nectar back. So any bee that you've seen on a flower is within 20 days of dying. They're in the last three Aww. weeks of their life. Isn't that amazing? But they only sleep for one or two minutes at a time, and then they get back to work. Beeswax. Now, all of the honeycomb is made, obviously, with beeswax. Mm -hmm. And the uh, caps that are on the outside of the comb to keep the honey in is also made of beeswax. You can't really feel it on the GoPro. Yeah, you can't. No, you but can't. here, but what, what does it feel like? Yeah, it's just, it's just oh, waxy. it's it yeah, like it is waxy. Beekeeper gets a lot of honeycomb because bees build comb everywhere. And so every time you go to the hive, you clean the hive up. You scrape the comb off of where you don't want the comb to be. So you end up with a mm -hmm. lot of honeycomb. I shouldn't wow. say a lot, but some. And you can melt it down and pretty soon you can get a block of, so this is a block of beeswax. Here's a smoker, a standard smoker. Um, I don't actually smoke my bees uh, too much anymore. I haven't smoked them for a couple of years, but theoretically if the bees are real active and you want them to quiet down, you can uh, burn some burlap in the smoker huh. and smoke comes out, not flame smoke, and you just uh, put a little smoke over the hive and the bees will go down into the hive kind of away from where the thing that calms bees down is spraying them 
with sugar water. Just a little bit of sugar on them uh -huh. makes them really happy. If you're going to be a beekeeper, you have to be close to water. Bees absolutely okay. need water. On a 95 degree day, uh, the inside of a hive can get really hot. Heat will kill bees. Yeah. So they have to keep the hive cool. And they do that through evaporative cooling. So they bring huh. water back from like a pond and they flap their wings and evaporate the water and keep the hive huh. cool. How about that? Another thing that's important about um, water is that the, um, the thickness of the honey is not accidental. The bees put the honey in the uh, comb and then they fan it until it's just the right thickness and then they cap it, okay? So the amount wow. of the water, uh, the water concentration of the honey has to be just right before they cap it. When it's perfect, they cap it. First, you probably join a local beekeeping club. So there's a okay. Northern Colorado Beekeepers Association. It costs $20 a year to belong to the NCBA. Look it up, join. They have like introductory bee classes. They'll tell okay. you how to be a beekeeper. And you can do it with a lot of other people who are also getting into it for the first time. Absolute experts come to the NCBA and talk about beekeeping. So that's your easiest thing. If you don't want to do any of that, there's a book that you can get online, Amazon.com. It's written by uh, Sam Atoro. It's like the beekeeper's handbook. It's about 18 bucks. It's, it's about this big. It's got a picture of a honeycomb on the outside. It's like the seventh edition. Read it. Just do what it says, and it okay. will all work. Okay? All right. <laughs> just, this is not a hard hobby. It's, it's really quite easy. The bees do all the work. All you have to do is help them get by, and they'll take mm -hmm. care of everything.